is also a benefit to us that this session will be recorded, so it will be soon on our website, along with the handouts that we have and the um, and for any additional information we might be able to provide at that time. As I go through my presentation, I encourage you to ask questions. If you have any questions at that time, that would be great. Otherwise, I can stick around for a few minutes afterwards and um, talk with you. Or if you are at a distance, you can also email us questions and we'll have information on that at the end of the presentation. This segment of the presentation is called Navigating Graduate School Part Two. We did have a part one and some of you were here for that. We talked about that you are a student in the College of Graduate Studies. Your discipline may be in the College of Agriculture or the College of um, Education, but you are a student in the College of Graduate Studies since you are a graduate student. The Dean of the College of Graduate Studies is your academic dean. That means we're also your center for services that you may need or questions you may have. Again, I want to reinforce what the role of the graduate college is, and that is that our goal is to try and make your time and experience at the University of Idaho as rewarding and successful as we can. And we try to do that in a number of ways, and we hope that if you are not finding it rewarding or you are not experiencing uh, good times, that you will come and talk to us about it so that we can have an opportunity to help you resolve those issues as best we can. We also talked about resources that are available to you, and there is the handout over there from session one, if you, don't, if you were not here, uh, that outlines various resources here on campus that are available to assist you. We also talked about tips to success, and uh, some students find those to be very helpful uh, when it comes to looking at how to plan, plan your programs. We talked a little bit about the steps to degree, how to do a major professor, how to do a committee, and how to get going on your study plan. If you have any questions on any of those, we can have a conversation about that. And we also talked about the important things regarding probation and disqualification and how you never want to get into those situations. So maintaining a 3.0 every semester you're enrolled is important to avoid probation or possible disqualification. We also talked about the satisfactory progress report system as well as incomplete grades. So that's kind of a recap of what we, what we covered in the first session. I also used this picture in the first session because I think this is a pretty, pretty indicative of the, where you might feel you're at at the beginning of your program. You've got this path ahead of you. You don't know where it's going for sure. You know you need to follow it. You know it's a little foggy in the middle there but hopefully you'll get to the other side and find out that there's a uh, the, the right road to follow and the things that you need to be doing. So this part of the presentation, now that you've followed, followed the path, now you've worked your way up the mountain, okay? You're working your way up the hill, trying to figure out what you need to be doing and how you need to be moving forward in your program. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So navigating graduate school part two. Different things we're going to talk about today. Preparing, defending, and submitting a thesis or dissertation. The completion requirements for non-thesis degrees. Deadlines for completion and graduation. How you apply for graduation. The difference between graduation and commencement. Diploma process. Letter of completion and transcript requests. So for some of you, this may seem quite a ways down the road. But it is an important thing to look at be aware of and then it's that time as these times approach for you you'll kind of have an idea of the things to uh, to follow rules to follow and things to look out for so let's talk about preparing a thesis or dissertation if you attended the writing seminar that was offered a few weeks ago on uh, how to uh, writing skills that was sponsored by the writing center here on campus some of this material was also covered during that presentation so if you have seen this before uh, we will be moving, moving through it quickly here. We do have a handbook for writing a thesis or dissertation that is available on our website. The website is indicated there. We ask that you do not use previous documents as a model for correct format. And that's really important. I had a student come in the other day who did a particular format uh, thing in the, in the thesis, and he said, well, I pulled off another student's thesis, and this is the way they did it, so that's the way I thought I was supposed to do it. What that student probably didn't realize was the copy of the thesis that might be in the, in the department or that he may have been handed to use 
may not be the one that was final, had final approval through our office. So there could have been changes that were made and the student just isn't aware of those. Or it could be that possibly the thesis was deposited with us, had this error, and we just couldn't get it fixed with the student. The student had already left. Sometimes we get into a position where we need to take um, things like that in a thesis or dissertation. We don't want to hold up the student's degree. It's not that egregious. We'll go ahead and, and take it but it is not the preferred way. So we definitely uh, suggest to you that you follow the uh, format guide that is in the handbook or come in and see us. We're glad to answer questions or you can contact us uh, through various distance methods. Again, utilize your resources for assistance. Your committee, the writing center, the graduate college, we're all here to help you when it comes to doing your document. Your committee is gonna talk an awful lot about the content. What, what should be in a thesis or dissertation? Thesis or dissertation is original research. It's yours. It's not like doing a research paper where you can just borrow a bunch of different ideas and put them together. It's original research that you do. So you want to talk with your committee to find out what are the expectations for your program? What is it that you need to be doing? It's good to have that conversation early in the process just so there's no time wasted and there's no misunderstandings along the way. The Writing Center is available to help you if you need some organizational help. How to frame your ideas, how to organize your thoughts, maybe to take a look at a draft of, your, of the writing that you have done. They're, they're there to help with the writing piece of it. Graduate College, we deal with the format. We see a lot of very, very interesting theses and dissertations that come our way, and some of them it would be just a real delight to be able to spend the time to read them uh, as close as I would like to sometimes, but I, we don't have that kind of time and I can't do that. So what we look at in the graduate college is format. We look at pagination, how the tables are laid out, how the table of contents, the rest of the document, how does it look for appearance factors? That's what the graduate college is, is looking for when we review your uh, document. When you're getting ready to defend a document, you need to be registered for either thesis credit or dissertation credit, 500 or 600 level credit when defending or submitting a thesis or dissertation. That compensates for the time that you are using, the faculty time and university resources that you're using. Be sure that you and your committee members are in agreement regarding the status of your document. That is a very key point. And the reason I bring that up is because you may have in your mind that you plan to graduate next May. Okay, that's, that's all you can do. The lease is gonna be up on the apartment. Maybe you've got a job you're gonna to go to. You've gotta be out of here in May, okay? That may not necessarily be a timeline that is shared with the rest of your committee. And so you need to have very good communication with your major professor and your committee to find out what is the timeline going to be? You might find out that maybe one of them is going to be on sabbatical. and Maybe you're going to need to make a change in your committee to compensate for that. You might find that one of them plans to be at a conference and out of the country during a certain period of time that would be key to the time frame for you to finish in order to get out of here when you want to, when you want to be done with your degree. Very, very good communication. And what you'll find is as you get closer and closer to the point of defending, that's when the the um, regularity of these conversations with your major professor and your committee will become much more steady and you will be meeting sometimes weekly, sometimes bi-weekly as it gets closer, maybe even daily. But the thing you need to do is just make sure that you're all on the same page. And the only way that you can do that is through communication with each other. Do not make assumptions that your committee knows when you're planning on finishing. Okay? You need to be communicating with them, understanding their schedule as well as yours. We always try to tell students too, be sure to try not to leave defending until the last three weeks of the semester. The last month of the semester, let's take the fall semester for example. Once you get to Thanksgiving, the Thanksgiving break that we have, you come back, You've got a week of school, we go into finals, we go into, or we go into dead week, we go into finals, then the deadline is due for the semester. Trying to fit in a defense during that time period can be very difficult. 
and that can put a real strain on what your your plans might be because the faculty also have other courses they're teaching finals to prepare students that they're working with and could be on the committee of a number of other students so you're not their only student okay so that's why it's really important in a spring semester you should have your final drafts out to your committee if you plan to finish by May final drafts and everything should be out to your committee I would say by spring break certainly by the first of April if not by spring break but there again you need to have that communication you might find out that somebody will say I'm going away for break so if I can have your draft that's a good time for me to read it because when I get back I'm going to be preparing for a conference and I won't have time okay good communication is the is the real key to making things go smoothly and going the way you want according to the timeline that you would like to see as soon as you have an idea of when you can uh, defend you want to reserve a date and a location that is mutually convenient you want to have again back to the communication issue we try and tell graduate students to plan on about four weeks per draft for your committee to review now sometimes committees can do it faster than that sometimes it will take them longer but you need to know what that time frame is going to be so that you know how to plan for a defense you want your committee to go into the defense having read your thesis or dissertation and having and having had the opportunity to give you feedback so that you can make any corrections that they might have when you defend it is a public presentation it's as public as me standing up here right now it is a public time and so you don't really want your committee to go through a series of telling mm -hmm. In a, in a room full of people how you should be switching sentences around okay so you want to go into your defense knowing that your thesis or dissertation is truly ready for a public defense if you are a doctoral student that defense will be advertised and anyone is eligible for a defense to attend a defense be it a master's defense or a doctoral defense and what I would recommend is in your discipline if you see that students are having defenses because they are open and they are public you are certainly invited to attend those you can see one see what one looks like and how they work okay um, in some departments it's something that all the graduate students do together if somebody is defending all the other grad students go kind of as a show of support and it is a valuable learning tool for you too kind of builds down the uh, the uh, anxiety that you might have when you start thinking about defending and so it is good to attend in the handbook that I made reference to yes are there are two stages to the defense you have the open defense and then uh -huh. after that everyone leaves but your um, major but, the, but your committee mm -hmm. and so that's how it works mm -hmm. in many departments that is the way it would work the committee will retire at some point to cast their vote and, and make a determination as to whether you pass or do not pass. Um, most defenses are structured in such a way that the student will give a presentation. There would be open dialogue, questions, answers from faculty in the department or faculty in general and, and other students. And then once that open time has, has ended, then the audience may be excused and then the student and the committee could just go about having their conversation and and finishing up the activities of the defense before the faculty vote again find out what your department does how does your department do it we do not prescribe how a defense must be conducted we just indicate that there must be one and that we receive a report of that defense once it's over okay so check with your department in the handbook that I talked about earlier there is a request to proceed with final defense that's a form that your committee signs saying we have reviewed the thesis or dissertation we approve and we're going to let this student defend and here's the date time and location of the defense when that form has been signed off by the entire committee the form is then forwarded to our office either the student brings it in or the faculty brings it in it can be emailed to us faxed to us however we get it it comes into our office at that time we construct a form called the uh, final defense report form and that's the form that the committee uses to tell us the results of your defense and they mark pass or don't pass on that okay again as the uh, previous slide indicated if you're a doctoral student that request to defend has to be into us at least 10 working days prior to your defense because we have to publicly advertise that the defense is happening 
we are not required to publicly advertise that a master's defense is happening. But um, so for doctoral students, it is 10 working days. Mm -hmm. Do you know the stats on pass or not pass by chance? I, I rarely see. I know what I'm saying. Yeah. What's ahead for I, I rarely. I rarely see anyone that comes in with a fail. They do happen, and I'll tell you, there's probably two scenarios that I can think of, that I have seen that have made a fail occur. One is the student has determined that, that he or she wishes to defend because they're on a timeline to get out of here, and they have got to defend, and they have got to move along. The committee has said, we don't think you're really ready, and the thesis isn't really at the stage that it should be. The student responds by saying, but I want to defend. And the committee says, okay. And then you get what you get out of, out of that kind of scenario. The other is, is that the, the student um, was not quite as ready and, as the uh, uh, faculty might have desired. That's why it's, communication is so important. Talk to each of the people. You don't want to set up a scenario where you would go in and, and uh, risk failing. Okay. Most faculty will not approve you to defend if they feel that that is a possibility. On the defense report form, do we stop by and pick that up, or is, is that sent to our committee chair? It's an exchange of paper that occurs in our office. When you, when you bring us or send us the request to defend, mm -hmm. we do the final defense report form. If you bring it in in person, you typically will leave our office with it in your hand. If, you, if it's mailed in to us, we will mail it back out. If it comes via electronic, we will send it out electronically. But it's something that is traded pretty much on the spot. And then following the defense, the form is returned to our office by the major professor, and that tells us the outcome of the defense, uh, and uh, then we can anticipate the arrival of the thesis or dissertation. When it comes time for you to submit your final copies after you have defended, and it is not unusual for there to still be corrections even after a defense, but the def it has to be submitted to us within at least six months following the defense. So be sure that when you defend that you are definitely on the final stages of your writing. Don't defend just a concept of the writing and then figure you'll write it all up later because that may take longer than the six months. But it is due to us within six months. If it is not in within six months, then you would have to petition to have it accepted or redefend. So it is common to have some corrections still, so just kind of be prepared for that, which is part of why you don't want to defend real late in the semester. It starts cutting down your time to finish and makes it harder for you to finish on time. <laughs> We make the suggestion that you take the authorization to submit the thesis or dissertation page with you to your defense. Now, if you've looked at a thesis or dissertation, that's page II of the thesis or dissertation, and that has all the signatures on it by your major professor, your committee, your department chair, your discipline dean, and then ultimately the graduate dean. If you take that page to your defense with you, some of your committee may be willing to sign while you're while you are there. Other committee members may say, I don't want to sign until I see the corrections made. That's up to each individual person. And you can talk with them at that time. Prior to having the final copies of your thesis or dissertation made, it's really nice to bring it by the College Graduate Studies. I'm more than happy to take a look at it, give you feedback on your format, make sure that everything's okay. When you have those final copies made, whether you go buy the paper and run them through a printer, or you have them made at the Campus Copy Center or another copy uh, facility in, in uh, Moscow or in your town, uh, it's expensive. It is not a, a cheap thing to have done. And so you want to make sure that when you have it done, you don't need to go back and redo it. So I'm more than happy to look at a, at a preliminary draft or what by that point should be your final draft before you take it to a copy center and have it done and give you feedback on it. So if there's anything that needs to be changed, you can make a change. Can we yeah. send you electronic copies? I don't take the electronic copies, and that's a really good question, and I, and I do appreciate that, and I'll tell you why. The electronic copies, if I bring them up and put them up on the computer and scroll through them, 
it really is true. Sometimes what I see on the screen is not what it's going to look like when it's actually printed out on paper. And I can give you a much better reading if I see it on paper. And I, we just do not have the ability to print off everybody's thesis or dissertation just to look at it on paper. So I don't take them in electronically. But if I can get a paper copy, I'm more than happy to take a look at it. The signatures on the authorization to submit page, please refer to the handbook. The handbook will give you the format that's supposed to be used for that. We do not require original signatures. And so what that means is, is that you can have one signature page that you can circulate with a copy of your thesis or dissertation. Everybody can sign off on that sheet. Then when you go to have your final copies made, you can put that sheet in with the thesis or dissertation and everything is printed off on the same paper throughout the whole document, including the signature page. We do not require original signatures. When you submit the document, all signatures will be on the copies you give us except for the Dean of the College of Graduate Studies. That signature is placed on there after we have received both copies of your uh, thesis or dissertation. And be consistent in how you list the names. If you're going to refer to somebody as, as doctor and their name, do it for all. If you're going to refer to them uh, with their name and their um, uh, title afterwards, or their, their degree name, then do it for everyone. Just be consistent in how you, how you list people. Okay? If you would like to have an extra signature page signed and then returned to you for your purposes and for making your own additional copies, then that's fine. Put it, please submit one extra copy, the dean will sign it, we'll return it to you, and then you can take it and make your copies as you wish. Okay. We do get two copies in the graduate college. After we process them, they are both forwarded to the uh, university library where one is placed in the archives and one is placed out on the shelf. Okay. Um, and the paper that you need to use is at least 25% bond paper. That's part of what makes it more expensive to make the final copies. The reason for the bond paper is it lasts longer. Uh, regular photocopy paper maybe last in, in the library they figure may last 50 years or so, but in, in the library world that's not a long time. So they like to have it on the bond paper so it will last a lot longer than that. Any questions on the thesis or dissertation submission on so far? Okay, we have a lot of students that are in non-thesis programs. So they don't write a thesis or a dissertation. They may do a project, a paper, a portfolio, a recital, a presentation. They do a number of, of different things. So in this case, if you are a non-thesis student, again, be sure to coordinate what you're exit activity will be with your major professor so it's not a surprise so that you know what's coming up and what you need to do. Talk with your major professor regarding the timing requirements and the expectations that your major professor has. When this requirement is met then the major professor turns in a form to us for the non-thesis report form that says the non-thesis student is done. Now in some departments the non-thesis student exit requirement really is handled the same as a thesis or dissertation presentation might be. Where you would do a presentation before a group of people, have questions, and then meet with your committee. So the process may be the same, it's just the outcome um, for the non-thesis student is a little bit different than it is for the thesis or dissertation student. Deadlines are really important to uh, follow. And as I said in, in part one, whenever a deadline is given, it is a deadline, it is not a suggestion, it is a deadline. And so what the, here are the deadlines for uh, this academic year. If you were planning to finish December 17 so that you could be a fall graduate, then you would need to, um, December 17 you would be a fall graduate with registration required. So you need to be registered for the semester if you're gonna do that. January 11 would be a deadline. That's the day before the spring semester starts. And if everything was submitted to us prior to the beginning of the spring semester, 
you would be a spring semester graduate, but you would not need to register for the spring semester. We give you these little periods between the semesters to try and finish up. The only thing I would caution you about, uh, be it this semester or a future semester, well, we tell you you can have an, these three weeks between the breaks to finish up. If part of finishing up means getting signatures from faculty or having faculty review what you have, the final corrections that you have done, that can be very difficult because that's during a break time. Most faculty are not available, they are not here, and you wouldn't have contact with them. If you go past the January 11 date to be a spring graduate, then you are required to be registered for that semester. So pay very close attention to the deadlines as you start approaching these deadlines in the future. Pay very close attention to those deadlines so you can meet those deadlines. Right now, if you had to register for the one credit because you missed a deadline and you're a non-resident, that's an $800 deal. Okay, so you want to pay very close attention to the deadlines. Is that the deadline we have to have the thesis in by or the defense form or what is the deadline for? Well, it's to graduate. Okay. It's the semester that you actually want to graduate. Mm -hmm. And that means everything is done. That means you've defended, your copies are in, everything's okay, your study plan's complete, everything is done, and there's nothing left to do. And so it's by that date. So I have had some students think that it's just the date to defend, and then they can, then they can uh, actually finish that semester and still have the six months to get us the copies, and that's not the case. Everything has to be in and done by the last day of the semester that you plan to graduate or by the deadline prior to that semester. Okay, good question. So once you get past the preparing, defending, and submitting your thesis or dissertation, then we can talk about the last steps for completing the degree. And let me just ask, are there any questions left on, on preparing, submitting, or defending a dissertation or thesis? Any questions? Were you gonna talk about um, applying to graduate we're going to talk about that. Applying to graduate? Yeah. Yep. That's, that's next. <laughs> okay. That's all right. Okay. So now we'll move on to just the final details. You've done the big work. You've, you've done the thesis. You've done the dissertation. You've done your, your exit requirement uh, for the non-thesis. So let's talk about how, how we're going to finish this up. The application for degree is a menu option on your Vandal web. And I maybe you haven't noticed it up to this point. But if you look out on your Vandal web, um, on the student menu where you would look at your transcripts or registration, you'll see a listing there for the application for degree. The application for degree is a form that you complete online. However, the most important piece of it is, is that when you have completed it online, there are very big instructions that say print the form and be sure to print the form when you're done. A lot of students will fill it out online, say thank you, and that's it, and walk away, and it stays in the computer. We can tell the student did it, but we can't do anything with it because we don't have the form. So until that system becomes more automated, right now you need to print the form. On that form, there are two places for the student to sign and for the major professor to sign. And then the form comes into our office. And it can either be dropped off at our office, faxed to us, or attached to an email and sent to us as a part of an email. The important thing is, is that we get it. Okay. If you are needing to send one in to your professor, the recommendation is, is, is that you ask the professor to sign it and return it to you. That way you know what's done. If you send it in to the professor and say, would you sign this and then take it to the grad school, you need to be sure to follow up on that to make sure that that, that happened within the time frame that it needs to happen. When you file an application for degree, fees are assessed at the time you complete the application. If you are a thesis student, you'll pay, well, everybody pays the $25 diploma fee. Okay. If you're a thesis student, you'll pay the $17.50 binding fee. Non-thesis students don't pay that. If you're a doctoral student, you will pay the $65 microfilming fee on top of that. And if you do not file the application for degree, by the deadline for the semester that you wish to graduate, there's also a $35 late fee that will be assessed to you. So the deadlines, if you plan to graduate as of the end of a spring semester, you want to be a May graduate, 
The application for degree is due in, in, uh, at the end of the spring semester. Okay, let me back up. At the end of a spring semester, your application for summer or fall graduation is due. Okay. At the end of the fall semester, that's when the application for degree is due for the spring semester. Okay. So you have to think almost a semester ahead if it looks like that you might graduate. Now, if it looks possible, but you're not sure that it might actually all come together, but it looks possible, go ahead and file the application for degree. If you don't finish the semester that you complete the application for, then just contact us and we can move the application forward to another semester. There's no additional fees to you. You just need to let us know so that we can move it. Okay? And that's very helpful for us and that way we can do a good job for you. Make sure that you do graduate the semester that you want. When you're looking to graduate, there are uh, several things we, uh, that you can look at yourself. We periodically receive phone calls saying, can you tell me if everything is okay? And can, am I going to be able to graduate? We're glad to make that confirmation for you. But I'll also tell you some of the things that you need to look at for yourself to see if, if uh, everything is in order. On your Vandal web, there is an item called graduate tracking, and your committee is listed on the graduate tracking screen. So check to see if your committee is listed correctly. Sometimes as you've been here, maybe you have to change a committee member. If that paperwork didn't get to our office, we have not made that change on your records. You bring us the final defense form saying, here's my committee, and when we look up your committee, if it's different, then that can cause us to stall a little bit, and you're going to need to go get a change of committee form so that we can get the paperwork in order. So take a look at that yourself just to make sure that your committee is in order so that you won't kind of run into that road bump at that time. Look at your degree audit. See, check to see that your degree audit is going to be clear. When you look at the degree audit, and we talked about that uh, last time, check to make sure that all the classes are checked off or that you're currently enrolled for them. And if that looks clear, then that's fine. If it shows that there's a class that is, has not been completed and it's still on your degree audit, then you need to be getting that class off of the study plan or figuring out what arrangements need to be made so that it won't hold you up when we start evaluating you for graduation. If you're a doctoral student, we need to make sure that you have your preliminary exam report into us. I haven't really covered the preliminary exam report yet, but I, I will to take, just to say a couple of things about it. If you're a doctoral student, preliminary exam is something that usually takes place at the time period when you've completed your coursework and you're just about to become full-fledged doing research. Okay. In some departments, the preliminary exam is a review of all the coursework. It could be an exam of all the coursework. It could also be a presentation of your dissertation topic. It could be an, it, anything that your department determines the preliminary exam could be. That's what it might be. We do not set out and tell departments what a preliminary exam needs to be, but we do say that one needs to exist and the student needs to pass the preliminary exam in order to be advanced to candidacy so that he or she can continue on and do the research. If a person passes the preliminary exam, they're allowed to continue. If they fail, then that's either a time they need to exit the program or that would be a time that they may need to do some additional study and if the department approves, have one more chance to take it so that they can be approved to continue on. Are you registered for the term that you plan to complete your requirements? We talked about the registration requirement earlier. Check to be sure that you are. There's a difference in the term graduation and commencement, and sometimes they're used interchangeably. Um, but for the purpose of this, I want to be sure that we have a, have a clear understanding. Graduation is what occurs at the end of the semester when all your requirements are met, and that's the date that you uh, that is placed on your diploma. That's graduation. Commencement is the ceremony that you attend. Okay? So some students graduate and go to commencement the same semester. Okay? So they, but they can be very different. Now, commencement, you are, you're not required to attend commencement, but it is a wonderful event, and I would highly encourage all of you to attend. 
In Moscow, we have a December commencement, which is held in the Kibbe Dome, and it really is a very, very nice ceremony. In May, commencement ceremonies are held not only in Moscow, but in Coeur d'Alene, Boise, and Idaho Falls at our centers that are located in those towns. And those are great ceremonies held at, the, at a more local level there and done in a very, very nice way uh, by the centers. So uh, I encourage you to take a look at the possibilities of attending commencement. Even if it may not be something that you're interested in attending, those around you may appreciate it. Sometimes we have family, we have uh, parents, spouses, and what a great example if you're in a situation where you have children that are, are of age to understand. It's a great example to them to see a graduation and uh, happen and a commencement ceremony. We do also offer the, the option if you wish to participate in commencement, but you're not ready to graduate yet, that you can ask to participate in commencement. Let's say, for example, you and all your friends are, are on track to finish in May, but something happens and you're not able to defend, you're not going to be able to finish up, but everybody else is going through commencement and you want to go through commencement with, your, with the, the people who have been the, the mates in your, in your department. Well, you can do that by requesting to walk through, and walk through means participate in commencement knowing that you're not actually graduating that semester. And if you wish to do that, then you want to contact uh, the Graduate College or the form that's indicated here. You can look that up on the registrar's website. And that needs to be turned in when you file your application for degree. So that's something to think ahead on. Um, that form, I'm mm -hmm. looking at it. Who do we need to turn it into? Because we need our college dean signature mm -hmm. and... But we're your college dean. Okay. The Graduate College is. Okay. So... We so go get the CNR dean or just try to get to you guys? Mm, just us. Any, any academic document that says college dean, it's going to be the graduate college because academically we're your dean. But do we still have to, if there are certain college departments, we have to... I think the form asks for your major professor's signature and the graduate, and your, and your dean, which is our office. But is it something about you also have to fulfill like individual college requirements or something like that? Well, as a graduate student, that's whatever's on your study plan. And if it's on your study plan, then we would take a look at that. Okay. Diplomas are sent approximately six to eight weeks after the end of the semester in which you graduate. And uh, the registrar's office is the one that handles all of that information for us. One thing um, about it is if you happen to finish in the, in the time period before the semester begins, Please remember that your diploma is going to be about six to eight weeks after the end of the spring semester, even though you might finish in January before the semester begins. You're going to be a spring semester graduate. It'll be six to eight weeks after the end of the spring semester. So there can be a time period lag there. So just, um, just something to be aware of if you're waiting for a diploma. In the meantime, before you get a diploma, you can always talk to the registrar's office about the possibility of getting a letter of completion. If you're starting to apply for jobs, and, it's, and, and let's say you defended and you're all done, and you did that in September, okay, and now you need to go and apply for a job, and the job wants to know that you are actually, that you have the degree, okay, that degree is not going to be posted to your transcript until December because that's when the semester's over even if you finish in, in, in uh, September, okay? It's not going to be posted until December. So you can get a letter of completion from the registrar's office. What that says is this student has completed the requirements, will receive the degree on X date. It's just that it's not that point in the semester yet, okay? So you can get a letter of completion if you need it. A lot of students use that when it comes to the application, uh, job application process. You can also request transcripts, and here's the form also for requesting transcripts. Uh, those are available through the registrar's office too. Uh, there is a charge for those plus mailing charges. The one thing about requesting transcripts, always find out if you need an official transcript or an unofficial transcript. It's a big difference, and there's also a difference in charge uh, when you order one, but whether you need an official or an unofficial. If you're applying for another program, they're going to want official. An employ a possible employer, unofficial may be fine. But you'll want to check on that whenever you order. 
If you are looking at the possibility of future enrollment with the graduate college or taking other classes here at the university, once you complete your degree, you're not in a curriculum anymore. That curriculum closes when you graduate. You have to be in a curriculum in order to take classes here at the university, otherwise the computer doesn't know to let you in and won't let you in to register for anything. So if you're not ready to go on for another degree, or it's not your desire to go on for another degree, but you want to keep taking some classes, then you need to do a form that's called the Change of Curriculum form. And that's something we have in our office. It's also available on the registrar's website and we can help you with that. And you can go into a, a classification called Grad Unclassified. And Grad Unclassified means that you're still considered a graduate student uh, because you have to be in a student category to take any classes, but that you're not working toward a graduate degree at that time. Okay. The nice thing about the Grad Unclassified category is that you can go ahead and um, use those classes toward a future graduate degree if you ever do decide to go for one because they will be recorded on a graduate transcript along with your other coursework. Okay? If you do want to do a change of curriculum and you do want to take other classes, then be sure to think about this process well in advance so that we can get the paperwork in order for you so that when it comes time for you to register for courses, we're going to be, you'll be in the system, you'll be able to register, and you'll be able to move forward. And here's some our address information. If you ever, if you have questions on any of this, or or you ever need you uh, need to stop by and see us, or call us, or fax materials to us, I've given you the information there. Let me uh, ask at this time: Are there any questions so far on some of the things that we've covered? Okay. Well, use the address information. If there's something that we can do for you, we're more than happy to. Uh, one of the things that we want to do as you complete your program is at the end of all this we want to see you right off into the sunset okay with a degree from the University of Idaho going forward to be a very proud alum of this institution we're proud of our students who finish our programs and we want you to be proud of the work that you have done too so we hope that we can help you along the way to make this truly a rewarding and successful experience for you so thank you and I appreciate your attendance.